video. Tra my trademark signature trick. Sorry, I do have to take this one call. It's from a client of mine, KFC. I, I think you've just destroyed 1,000 years in hard work on a supply chain, but that's besides the point. <laughs> Um, Take the call. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, let, let's talk about some things that are happening in our industry. Um, you know, our entire world is getting more and more digitalized. Uh, there's this huge conversation that takes place between traditional media and, and the digital media. Uh, you are the world's, and you've been described as the world's first cyber magician. <clears throat> You're the most downloaded magician in the world with, I think, 50 million hits on YouTube. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you've done on, on the online space. In our industry, sometimes technology uh, takes over, and you know, often just the big idea gets gets missed out because of the technology, right? So, what's going on in the world of technology and the world of magic? Number one, and then we'll come back and talk a bit about digital. Um, very good question. Um, first of all, technology enhances audience experience. Um, well, before I touch on that, first of all. Technology with YouTube and the internet has been super amazing. Without the power of the internet and YouTube, I would probably not be where I am today, being here talking to you. Um, in terms of technology helping with magic, um, we have to evolve as technology evolves. We started with radio. We went to television. From television, we went to plasma screens. From plasmas, now we're going to 3D technology. I can't tell you much about the 3D that I'm working on. Everyone's working on 3D. But what's amazing about it is that through 3D technology, it's completely enhancing the consumer experience. So now, not only are they visually seeing things in three-dimensional, now we put magic to that, entertainment, storytelling. I believe, I think it just, it's the ultimate um, consumer experience. That's what technology does, is doing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the world of digital has obviously changed our world completely. You know, uh, there's so much going on in that, in that space. Um, did you have like a strategy to be the most downloaded guy on YouTube? How did it happen? Is it just word of mouth? Because a lot of us here in this room constantly struggle to find out how do we exploit the digital media. You know, and here's a person who's downloaded 50 million times. Viral marketing, it's very powerful. What can I say? I, there was no... Um Magic is very visual. Don't need another language to, um, to express changes. And it just reached out to the world. Okay. You know, it's the, I have to say, it's like the evolution of magic. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the evolution of technology. And in the evolution of technology, we have the evolution of magic. Um, so with technology, it would go exactly in the same form. We have to evolve with the technology. Take our magic, take the advertising a notch, notch up, a niche. All right. Thank you very much. Um, all right. You know, we, we're here at Spikes. This is arguably Asia's most premier awards function. Um, people in our industry, I think, are awards obsessed. Um, you know, but it is, it is a great form of recognition. And uh, as you can see, there are so many people here waiting to get honored tonight for their work. Now, I know that at the 39th uh, Academy Awards of Magic, you were voted uh, Magician of the Year. Um, you know, I just want to understand, who judges magic shows? <laughs> uh, Nervic, I think the people who judge magic shows are the one who claim to be experts uh -huh. in magic. Well, that's a bit like here, don't worry. <laughs> Um, but really, what, what, do, what, what did it mean to you to win Magician of the Year? You know, and these are people, you know, very senior magicians, well-known names, like David Copperfield, et cetera, who, who voted you as Magician of the Year. So, you know. Uh, okay, so first of all, awards are very flattering to me. What it means to me, um, what it doesn't mean to me, it doesn't mean that this is the end. It doesn't mean that I'm allowed to relax, because when people award you with something, People are recognizing you for something that you have developed in your life. Um, for me personally, uh, when I receive an award, it pushes me to exceed my own magic. It pushes me to even go beyond what people expected. Um, winning an award means that it's just the beginning. But, but I presume in magic shows, everybody gets a gold, right? Because even if you've got a silver and you 
did something to become gold, right? It's fairly easy, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm, I, I'm guessing. I mean, do, do, you, do you make other brands disappear? Would you like me to? <laughs> uh, later. I'll point, out, I'll point out the people later. <laughs> All right, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about, you know, we, we have in our business uh, this constant, not invented here, will a global idea actually work in Asia? Is the Western idea, will, will it travel to the East? Uh, now, you know, you, you were born in America in LA, and you after that moved to Japan, and really you are straddling, you know, both ends of the spectrum, you know, the East meets West. Um, what do you find? Because you're, you're out there entertaining people like we are, right? What, what has been, you know, the sort of takeaway what you've, when you've gone to different countries? Are there, like, any strict rules? Are there, you know, things like that that happen in your world? Um, what rules? I don't know. Meaning other, other you know, sensitivities, other things that you will not do somewhere that you will do somewhere? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm always culturally sensitive to the material that I'm doing. Some things I would not do in some countries, um, like the cigarettes, for example. Some countries it's you know very looked down upon, and some countries uh, it's illegal if you're not a smoker. Um, and um, I mean, there's many things in magic that that apply to this. So I think it's it's very important to to do your research and understand the audience and to know um, what it is that that's not accepted in their society. The, the other day when we were chatting, uh, you gave me a really interesting uh, story about what works in Japan and what work, doesn't work <coughs> in Japan. You know, why don't you just tell the audience, you know, the whole Japan thing of Western versus local? Mm -hmm. um, well, there's a lot of clutter in Japan and um, with brands. Um, so everyone's looking for something a little bit different. When they bring me in, they bring me as an international performer wanting to deliver something than their partner brands. Yes, they bring me in to differentiate the brands. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that do work in Japan that don't work in other parts of the world. I mean, cell phones are a great example. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but the phones being sold in Japan don't work anywhere else in the world. And it's like, it's, so when they bring me in, they want me to do something different. Mm -hmm. But is, <laughs> you know, is it fair to say that they look for more Western magic, if there is such a thing? Yes, they look at me as an international star, so right. they want something different. Well, that's, you know, those, are interesting, those are interesting parallels, because in our business, we have to be culturally sensitive. We take global ideas and we execute them locally. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are lots of parallels. Um, but you know, we're both in the business of engaging with our audiences. Yes. At the end of the day, this is about how do you get people to watch your ad or to do something that you've put out for a brand. And it's really about the human connect. Yes. Right? Now, you are probably and arguably, I think, one of the best people when it comes to street magic. And you know, you've made the connection clearly with your audience. Yeah. <coughs> what, what, what do you think you know, has been the thing that differentiates you so much and gets the audience so involved in what you do? Um, for me, I try to make everything very organic. And it's about connecting with people and the storytelling that goes with it. Um, I try to make things relate to, to, the, to my viewers, to the environment. Um, and, um, and I think that's where we find our common connection between me and the consumers, is that I'm always putting myself in, any, in everyone else's shoes. Um, you know, like in Magic, if I were to uh, bring out like a big yellow box and I say, ladies and gentlemen, here's a big yellow box that you've never seen before, and to proceed forward, nobody would know what this yellow box is. But in my years I've, I, uh, of doing Magic, I've come to an understanding that when I organically do magic, use everyday product, everyday objects that people can relate to, water bottles, um, cigarettes, uh, a pen, um, you know, whatever it is. I'm just looking around the room right now, these uh, eggs, uh, anything. Y let me give you an example, because, um, because we pre prepared one. Can you play right. the uh, video number two, please? <laughs>
This is from my AXN special. It's in English so you guys can understand. Is that it? What's next? And the hot water. Hot water! Yeah. Do you have some hot water? Cold water. Cold water. That's right. Today, we are going to make instant noodle with cold water. You're laughing. You're all laughing, okay? All right, let's do me a favor. I'll take the water. You hold that. Cold water. Watch. That's good. You hold that. We're going to close this. Now, how long does it take to make instant noodle? Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to step on this side. Everybody, come close. Put your hand flat like this. Okay, the other hand just like this, okay? Everybody, put your hand out. Good, okay? Are you ready? Okay, watch this. Let's fast forward. Tell me when you feel heat, okay? What? <laughs> Do you feel it getting warm? Yeah. It's, is it getting hot though? Okay. Put your hand on the side. Go ahead, touch. Touch. Lift it up high. Can you feel it? it's getting hot? Okay, hold on guys, hold on. Good. So while this is now playing, let me just explain it. that. Just hold it like that. Because everyone in Taiwan is familiar with this particular uh, instant noodle, they can relate to the yeah, product. And also, here, this is a good clip example of what I'm talking about, how magic is such a universal language that even though these people okay. do not understand now, what I am saying, we are going to it really connects it through the language of magic. Very visual. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, can you split that apart for me? Okay, ready? Watch that. Yeah, look at that. Hold on. Show the cameras. Yeah, get that nice steam. Just mix it up a little bit. And I think we're ready to eat this. Would you like to taste? Okay, yeah. Your boyfriend? Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Me first. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. Um, now I know that you've worked with a lot of uh, agencies for products and for brands. Um, you know, so do all these highly creative people come and impose their creative ideas on you? I'm sorry, say again? I said, do all these highly creative people come and impose creative ideas on you when you work with brands, or did they leave you alone? Um, well, for me, it's about collaborating with, their, with partners, uh, collaborating with the brands. Uh, we come together and we brainstorm together. They give me their inputs. They, give this, they um, share with me what their uh, message is behind the brand or the theme, and, um, and then we go through the whole creative process in the same way. <clears throat> they... It's all about working together. When we work together, we come up with some really, really good stuff. So there is magic in advertising and brands? Are you kidding me? Magic can definitely help advertising. This is subliminal um, advertising. It's not like you're pushing the product in people's face. No, but I think it's terrific word of mouth as well. I mean, you know, the amount of people are going to talk about it is going to be great for the brand. Uh, look, we, we can talk forever, sir, I mean, but you know, I think people here have to, at some stage, go for an award ceremony. But you know, <laughs> there, there has been, I think, through this conversation, lots of similarities between our businesses, whether it's connecting with the audience, whether it's you know, how you use digital media, and other things. But in our business, sometimes, not sometimes, communication is a very powerful tool. You can take on some very serious issues and change the world, whether it's about becoming the green world, or environmental friendly. You can take on causes, and you can create magic in that communication that actually helps society and change people's lives, right? Yes. Do you think magic does that? The things that I have experienced in my career as a magician have been so amazing. Um, <clears throat> with me, I try to aim for making an impact on people's lives, to make a change through magic. The power of magic goes beyond just tricks and you know, abracadabra, it's, this is very entertaining and very fun, but when you see people's lives changed or, or impacted on 
magic from their reactions. It's, that is, in my, in my, that's real magic to me. 